Hello, beautiful people, and welcome, hi, to Ask the Jeff Kokomi Edition. Do not judge the level of my characters. I don't really play on this account anymore. Mushrooms are a pain in the ass to collect, all right? Anyways, let's get started. So, what's our overall place in the beta? Pull value compared to the other 3.85 stars, and how much has changed with her since her last rerun, just after Dendro's release, especially after we got more options for healing, defense, and vitality. What's her overall place in the meta? I, I like conceptualizing the, the five star units this way. You have the units that like, they're good enough that even if you don't particularly like them, they'll open up so many possibilities for units that you do actually like, that they might be worth going for, even if you don't really like that unit specifically just because it will make the other units that you can use with them a lot stronger and you because they're used with so many units then that's nice so like the the the, the, the five stars that fall into that category are like kazuha nahida and like arguably elon and then under that you have the five stars that are very good but that just won't be necessary to build some like very strong teams not that it's necessary to have kazuha nahida Elon to build very strong teams, but they open up so many options for very strong teams where they're in a lot of different archetypes, right? And then you look at the options below that, which are also good, but yeah, they're a lot more replaceable. If you don't want that unit specifically, you can probably find another unit that does a similar job. I would say that Kogami falls into that second category along with a lot of other very strong units, like a high thumb, child, Raiden. The main thing about Kogomi is that what she provides is a little bit different than what a lot of the other units in that category provides. She's not there to reshape the team. When you play Kogomi instead of another unit in a given team, it doesn't change the way the team is played, it just gives you more defensive utility, right? So for example, when you play Kogomi in freeze teams over someone like Mo, it doesn't change the way that the freeze team is played, it just gives you healing. When you play her in Hyper Bloom or Burgeon, it doesn't change the way the team is played, it just gives you healing. But yeah, like the, these are useful things, right, that, she, that she's providing, but the amount of healing that you need in a team will depend on how good you are and what other characters are in the team. A team that has Beidou and Tsing Tso barely needs any healing because you have so much damage resistance that in order for Tsing Tso's Rain Swords not to out heal the damage you're taking you need to be taking enough damage that you'd basically just die if you didn't have resistance to interruption right like you get a lot of of, of defensive utility with both of those right so in a team that has both saint so and, and beto the healing that kogumi provides loses a lot in value because it's just not nearly as necessary on the other hand if you look at something like a nilo bloom team where you're not playing a dendro healer maybe you don't have yao yao yeah like you need someone to heal <laughs> and while barbara can heal in nilo bloom teams her healing when she's built fully m is not as strong as kogumi's healing which means that you will often find yourself in situations where you're just not healing enough or you have to sacrifice some damage in order to build some healing so that's one of the situations where kogumi's added value can shine she also has a different dynamic with how she applies her hydro than barbara but yeah, anyways, uh, all, all of this to say, Kogumi is a unit whose value will depend a lot based on player and account, right? Not just based on account and not just based on player. And because of that, it's very hard to give her like an actual unmovable place in the meta. But she generally hovers around a fairly good unit. Now, that won't be the case for everyone. I mean, she's running with Wanderer. If you're the kind of player who really likes Wanderer and the type of playstyle that you get with Wanderer, right? You really like hyper carry playstyles. Kokomi might not be for you because she doesn't really fit well in hyper carry teams and she might not improve any of your teams. Anyways, how much has changed since her last free run just after Dendro's release? Uh, her last free run, if I remember correctly, was before Nahida and Nilo's initial releases so a pretty decent amount has changed i would say but mainly the addition of nilo into the game has opened up a new avenue for hydro units a new team archetype initially dendro didn't have any healers and so your best healing option was kokomi uh nowadays dendro does have yao yao which is a strong healing option and that makes her value in those nilo teams a little bit less I guess a little bit less important. Not that she's not at, not good in those teams anymore, but 
she's not the only option if you want to have a team with decent defensive utility anymore. Yayo heals so much that it almost doesn't matter if you have any healing outside of her or any defensive utility outside of her in, in a team where you use her. Which has made Kogomi less, or which has made Nilo teams less reliant on having Kogomi and given you more options if you don't really want to get her. But she is still good in Nilo teams, especially when you're playing Nilo teams against the kind of content where Nilo generally isn't that insane, right? When you're playing, for example, well, when we had the Wii Nut a few abysses ago, right? Yao Yao isn't the best Dendro unit for stuff like the Wii Nut because she doesn't really front load her application and she's pretty reliant on like long cooldowns and she can't move her things. And so that will make a unit like Kole gain a lot in value as a second Dendro unit. And when you're using a unit like Kole, if you want to not die, you're going to need a healer. And that, you know, incentivizes you to go for Kogomi again. But yeah, uh, all in all, Kogomi is a reasonably nice option in Nilo teams, where she's not necessary for the Nilo teams to be good, but she does give you more options for your Nilo teams and more versatility when it comes to the kind of uh, content you can be good against, as well as generally just making it a little bit more comfortable. Outside of those teams, I think you could make an argument that Kokomi has maybe lost a little bit in value. Not because she's worse in, in those other teams, but just because the release of Dendro has given us a lot more team options, a lot of which aren't really where Kokomi shines, a lot of which are teams where Kokomi is just not that great, which has just given you more options for teams that don't really want to have Kogomi, right? So if you look at, for example, Hyperbloom teams, she can be used on Hyperbloom teams, but she's generally not the best option because her single target application is like, it's reliant on her being on field and it's not even that great. And her AOE application is fairly slow. So it leads to, compared to other Hydra options, generally just a lot less seeds being generated. She's still completely functional in, in those Hyperbloom teams, but she is a little bit less favorable than a lot of the other options. And then on top of that, Hyperbloom teams have the option to use Cookie as their Electro Trigger, which can single-handedly fulfill any defensive utility needs that you might have. You can use her in Burgeon teams, but her slow elemental application makes it fairly difficult to reliably get seeds, right? When you're... Obviously, what I'm about to show isn't always going to happen, right? A lot of things can mitigate this, but I just want to show the interaction very quickly, right? So, you get, you get some seeds at the beginning, sure. But then as soon as you start burning, it kind of just doesn't happen anymore. No more seeds. We haven't gotten a burgeon since the beginning. And that's because while the enemy is burning, they have two units of the burning aura on them. And one, the one unit of hydro that Kokomi applies with her, with her E is going to be enough to put out the burning. It's going to be enough to trigger vaporize and remove the burning aura. But there's not going to be any leftover hydro that is going to make it to the dendro to trigger a bloom reaction. Uh, you can mitigate that, right? If you decide to on-field her, you'll apply more hydro and you'll be able to do it. You can use units like Toma instead of Shangling, which have slightly lower power up and you'll still get some seeds, but the reality that you will get less seeds is true, right? Her slower hydro application ends up being more of a downside in Burton teams than in other teams. Then you have all of the like pre-Dendro teams, right? You have Taser, where she's still a reasonable option, but I, I, I've noticed that a lot of people tend to not really like playing Taser too much anymore. Uh, it is still a good team, and it's still a fine team for Kokomi. It was never a great team for her, but it was also never a bad team for her, so it's still kind of all right. You've got the Suk teams, right? So the, the good old Suko Koman, right? Which is still a fairly strong team, but it tends to be a team that people don't really play too much because it's a bit more difficult to play properly. I like playing it, but I don't have Kogumi on my main account. I only have it on, I only have her on this account and this account has relatively high ping. It's not that high, but 200 ping is enough to make Global Swirls a lot less reliable, especially when there's ping spikes, which there are a lot of the, on the Taiwan server. <laughs> I'd probably enjoy it a bit more if I had it on uh, on my main, but uh, it's it's still a good team. Uh, then you have I mean you have the free teams, which I already mentioned, where she is actually fairly good. She's not gonna provide you with higher damage, but she will provide you with a lot more defensive utility, which can make things a lot more comfortable. You can kind of use her in vape teams, but I just don't recommend it. Her hydro application is 
and sus, and it's just not gonna be very nice. Although it can function. Uh, you can play her in like Mono Hydro, which is a team that I don't tend to recommend too often because adding a third Hydro unit in your team instead of an Electro unit to get some Electro charges on your Animal unit or Power unit to get some Vapes generally tends to not be as good, but the core for Mono Hydro is so strong that it doesn't really matter if the slots are used quote unquote optimally it's still a very strong team so if you just like seeing the 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 dark blue hydro numbers then yeah it's still it's still a very strong team right you can you can very much go for it yeah again uh, I, I see a relevant point in chat if you if you have her c1 it does help increase her hydro application which can make it a little bit easier to well if for which can make her a little bit better in every single one of the teams where you would on field her and you'd care about the speed of your hydro application uh, but mainly i think it's the most noticeable in vape teams where it it goes from being very very difficult to reliably get vapes on your main target to it being basically brain dead it's just gonna happen uh, but it also just increases her damage if you're on field anchor so it's like kind of nice but yeah all in all like kukumi has a lot of fairly strong teams but she also has a lot of teams where she is not the only option or necessarily the best option either she is a good unit to go for but not a great unit to go for is the basically the the, the way I, I conceptualize it if you like her and you like her kit you're probably not gonna end up benching her but if you don't really like her you're not gonna you're not gonna regret skipping her how does she generally stack up against the likes of ayato child mona yelan and zingto in the comps you can play her in and when can she be a good or bad pull over the other five star hydros in that regard especially for new and veteran players alike i think the unit she's the closest to is ayato because they effectively fulfill exactly the same roles with the main differences that on top of their overlap and roles kokomi also has healing and in in exchange for that healing, Ayato gets much better AoE. Because neither of them are particularly good in hyper carry teams, the fact that Ayato does do reasonably more damage than her doesn't actually matter that much because most of the time you don't end up playing Ayato in teams where you're playing him with Kazuha and Bennett to like hyper boost his damage, right? And so, while well, Ayato does have higher damage, when you look at the overall team DPS, the difference isn't that huge. It's really mostly how big Ayato's AoE is versus Kokomi's. Personally, I don't play that many teams where I care too much about my Hydro units healing. And because of that, I, I have Ayato on my main account and I don't have Kokomi and I'm fairly happy with that. Like if, if I had the opportunity to trade my Ayato for a Kokomi, I would not do it. But if you like playing teams where you need a little bit more healing or if you just need a little bit more healing in general because you're not a loser like me who spends way too much time playing this game then kokomi can be better than ayato but i really do think that ayato is her closest comparison they will fulfill the same role within a team with kokomi having the added healing and ayato doing the role better in exchange for that i don't think she's that comparable to child his kit lends itself very well to vape teams and pretty poorly to everything else because of the way that he has like one big hit followed by really good hydro application which means that you can forward vape his big hit and then use his the rest of his damage to reverse vape something like Shang Ling. Child is one of the better units to go for if you like pushing yourself for like higher speeds for your clears because the dynamic of how international deals its damage you have a lot of front load and you have a lot of buffs that multiply each other right you have em buffs that multiply damage buffs that multiply res shred that multiplies attack buffs which means that it tends to scale a little bit better with higher artifact quality than some other teams that would do as much or even more damage with a lower quality artifacts but ma mainly it's it's the fact that it front loads its damage so well at the end of the day kogami is a much more versatile pull than child child is only really good in international and to some extent in intergrational which is uh you use nahida instead of shang ling and you basically just play burgeon child you can do some pretty cool 15 second rotations that are very fun to play but not necessarily all that great at the end of the day overall kokomi is a more valuable pull but child is stronger at his peak basically so depending on what you want to do that will 
help you decide which unit you want to go for. The comparison to Mona, they're only really played interchangeably in freeze teams. I don't really like Mona that much in freeze teams. I never have. Uh, she's good for speed for speedrunning with freeze teams, but as soon as you start not having the investment to one rotate enemies, her lower hydro application makes the freeze teams feel a lot more clunky, and so I just really don't like it very much. But if you're willing to reset a lot, Mona should be better a better option than Kokomi. If you are playing a freeze team and you have Mona and you're considering whether or not to get Kokomi, you don't need to get her. You basically look at, are you struggling to not die on your freeze team? If yes, then she's probably good. If not, she'll probably won't be that good. But if you don't have Mona because she's a standard unit, so you can't like actively decide to go for her and you want to play a freeze team and you're like, okay, well, should I go for Kokomi or should I just wait and hope that eventually I lose my 50-50 to Mona? Getting Kokomi is fairly good. And then uh, I don't think she's really comparable to either Yelan or Singto. They're just on another level, especially Singto. Uh, you, there are teams where you can play her instead of Yelan or Singto, but generally those are not, those are few and far between. Number three, as a bit of a general question after the last one, when do you want fast hydro application and when would opting for slower application be better? Okay, so as a general rule, right, the faster your hydro application is, the more likely it is that hydro will become your aura, right? When you, when you hit an enemy, right, it applies an aura on them. And then you can trigger a reaction by attacking them with a different element. When you have very fast application, you're more likely that you're you're gonna remove the aura and you're gonna reapply the element and it's gonna become the aura. So you wanna have fast application when your team is built around Hydro being the aura. And you wanna have slower, but not like too slow application when your team is built around Hydro being the trigger. So a good example of that is Nilo teams, right? In Nilo teams, you don't really want Dendro to be the trigger because when you do Hydro on Dendro, it removes the aura, but when you do Dendro on Hydro, it only consumes a little bit and you can get two blooms instead of one with only one application. That means that ideally you'd want to have the same speed of Dendro and Hydro application with the Dendro being applied before and that's Bog. But that's like the perfect scenario. Whereas if you start having a little bit more Hydro application, then Hydro will become the aura and you will basically be dividing, you'll be losing out on a lot of blooms. Basically. Another hypothetical example where you wouldn't want fast hydro application is if we had a hydro character that is good at, at forward vape, but we don't really have that right now. Other than that, in almost every situation, faster application is better. Realistically speaking, how much of an upgrade is she over Barbara, especially in Nilo Bloom? I used Kogumi's initial release to promote Barbara because I think that people generally tend to underestimate how good Barbara is because she's a free unit, so they just overlook her. She is an upgrade over Barbara, but people underestimate how good Barbara is. She's a reasonable upgrade, not an insanely huge one. In some teams she can be, right? Don't get me wrong. But in others, she's kind of just a, an all right little increase and nothing crazy. That being said, the, the ways in which she applies her Hydro, it's the AoE is a lot bigger, which also makes her a decent amount easier to play, which definitely adds to how much better she'll feel over Barbara. To get this out of the way early on, can you once again share your thoughts as to why her minus 100% crit rate passive and no, is nowhere near, near as limiting as it may seem, and why I think it's good design? Sure. People on her initial release saw that she had minus 100% crit rate and were like, She's bad. Let's explore what would happen if she didn't have this 25% healing bonus and minus 100% crit rate. While keeping in mind that this is an additional passive that is not replacing a pre-existing one. So, with passive, without passive. For now, let's just take a look at what happens if you stick to similar builds as you're using right now. So we're gonna go for maybe TDDS. So uh, 35.2 from Thrilling Tales, 46.6 from HP Sense. L let's look at a Hydro Goblet with HP substats. So we have this and then we have substats. Without or with her passive, you don't look for crit substats. You look mainly for HP substats, which means the total amount of HP substats you will get is gonna be a lot higher, obviously. So let's say you get an average of maybe four HP substats, 20% HP on flower and feather, and two and a half on goblet and circlet, because it's a bit harder to get those. 20% from middle lift, we're looking at clam. Uh, uh, yeah, we're looking at clam right now. All right, so we have about 40% and then about 25%. So about 65. 
25%-ish. And without passive, right, you wouldn't build her the same way you'd build her with crit, so more something like this. Flat HP, 4780. Then you'd have, all right, because again, you're actively looking for HP rolls rather than just looking for crit rolls, you're gonna have more flat HP as well. So instead of the usual one to two rolls of flat HP, I would normally assume, let's go for a little bit more because again, it's a good stat for Kokomi with her passive. So maybe something like six instead of one to two. Whereas with this, you'd be closer to like 5K, which brings your total HP, decent amount higher. Now, obviously we can also after that, look at what happens if you don't replace the HP rolls with crit, but it's just gonna make this go down. Attack percent, again, right? With her passive, uh, you get a little bit more because you're not looking for crit rolls, so you're keeping an eye out for attack percent rolls as being fairly decent. Uh, instead of the usual four rolls of attack percent, I'll, I usually assume let's do maybe six with her passive. Flat attack, I'll just assume the same because flat attack is marginal enough that you're not really actively looking for it. And then we get to crit value, right? So here it, it doesn't matter. Crit multiplier is 100%, you're not gaining anything. Uh, crit, crit value here, you'd get, let's take a look at, I mean, you'd start at 60, right? And let's take a look at 20 rolls of crit. All right, very cool. Now healing bonus. So you have the 35.9 from the circlet, you have the 15 from clam, and then the 25 from the, the passive. And then here, well, you lose a 25 from her passive. And again, right, this is not something that is replacing an Ascension 1 passive. This is an additional passive. Gogumi has one more passive than other units. Okay, damage percent, normal attacks. Let's say you go for a Hydro Goblet, right? You, you're a high investment Kogomi. You go for a Hydro Goblet with HP subs because that's generally better than an HP Goblet with no good subs because you can't get HP, uh, HP percent sub stat on HP percent main stat. Am I using healing bonus for crit build? All oh, right, that's true. I don't actually know which one would be better. I'll, we'll get to that later, right? But yeah, that is that is fair. Uh, so you get 46.6% hydro damage. And is that is that it? I think that's it, right? Oh yeah, Ascension, thank you. So effective HP is gonna be, wait, as you can see, right? With, with crit, you get a lot more effective HP, but uh, you, also, you also get more effective attacks. Let me just do that real quick. But in exchange for that, you get less healing bonus and healing bonus is giving you motion value based on 15% of that healing bonus on each hit from her normal attacks. Now, the general best Kogomi combo is N2 walk, but I don't know if we should use that because that's a little sus to do in practice for a lot of people and most people just match normal attacks. So I think we'll just do N3. Let's assume you stay in burst for the full 10 seconds. You have five hits of the E during the burst. So before accounting for clam damage, we can see that the crit build is doing a little bit more, but I'm sure you can see where this is going, right? Before looking at clam, the crit build is only 7% higher. I don't think it takes a genius to figure out that once we do add clam, they're gonna be basically the same. But let's do it anyways. And then the, your clam damage is gonna have one clam proc will be basically two healing ticks from the E and maybe six? Maybe more like five, right? So your clam pr proc like number one would be this. And then you have two of these. Well, you have three of these. And then you'll have another maybe two clam procs where uh, you're not on field. So you just lose the on field part of the healing. And once we add this clam damage, as we can see, the damage from her build with the passive is actually higher. Now, obviously, if you were to build her around her damage, if you were to put the crit build on a team with Kazuha on a team where you're, instead of using Clam, you're using like Heart of Death. You could get the version of her kit that doesn't have that crit passive to do more damage. But the whole point of her having this passive is twofold, right? There's two main reasons. Reason number one, which is the one I'm addressing here, they wanted her to feel different. They didn't want to have just another unit that you play with the same supporting units that you just maximize their damage in the same ways because it's boring if everyone does the same thing. Also, wait, let me just double check. I think you do get more healing if you go, or you do get more damage if you go healing bonus, circle it over crit. Yeah, you do. And it's about the same. Like even with the crit build, you'd still go healing bonus over crit. And yeah, and you'd obviously also be able to get some bigger numbers trying to go for like, wow, huge crit Kokomi. But the whole point of the passive is to make a character have incentives to be played in teams that are slightly different. And the second the second reason to have a passive like this is to make farming artifacts for this character feel different than farming artifacts for everything else. One of the most 
frustrating things about artifact farming to me is that when i'm farming something like emblem it's just so incredibly straightforward does this have crit it good does this not have crit it's bad it makes it feel so linear and repetitive and adding characters to the game that scale with stats that are different that don't want the stats that you usually do want is good it makes the experience of farming for character feel more interactive if you watch streams you'll notice that whenever someone gets a shit artifact people will say something like oh this is an albedo piece oh this is a kokomi piece and they do say it as a joke but the thought process that an artifact can be bad for one character, but good for another, helps make the artifact farming experience feel a lot more interactive. Which, in my opinion, is very, very good for the game. So basically, right, getting back to the actual question, can I once again share my thoughts as to why her 100% current rate passive is nowhere near as limiting as it may seem? She does about the same damage if you play her as the healer type role that she's meant to have. And why do I think it's good design? Because it helps the artifact farming experience feel a lot more interactive. I wish we had more characters that had limitations like that, that made it so that crit isn't as good on them. Like the, the, the main issue I have with the, that passive on Kogami is that no one else really wants to go for clan. I think it would be a lot more fun and it would help the artifact farming experience even more if you had a character that wants emblem that doesn't work with crit or one of the new upcoming sets that doesn't work with crit anyways all right next up talent overview is it ever worth leveling anything other than her skill for just general use and q or normal attacks first when in an on field dps role definitely q first when you're using her in an on field dps role right if we're taking a look at the portion of her damage that is coming from her normal attacks versus her burst part of normal attacks. If we remove the motion value from normal attacks versus if we remove the motion value from the burst scaling, right? As you can see, you lose a lot more by not having the burst portion of your damage than by not having the normal attack portion of your damage. You still kind of want to level both eventually if you actually play her, like if you actually normal attack with her, but the, the burst is a lot more important. Uh, obviously, this is going to be a little bit closer if you're using stuff like uh, Prototype Amber, where it has higher base attack than Rilling Tails, but the basic idea stays the same. Burst is more important than normal attacks, but normal attacks aren't entirely useless. Artifact set overview, when to use Tenacity, Clam, and Gilded Slash Flop, is healing bonus or HP circle better on a general purpose healer build, and how viable is an ER Sands over an HP one? The thing about Tenacity and Clam is that, as far as I understand, with really high investment, Clam can outdamage Tenacity. It, it really just ends up depending on how your investment distribution looks on Kogami herself versus on the other units. Like when you're playing her with Ayaka, for example, how well invested is your Ayaka? Does she have Mist Splitter? Like how how much crit value does she have? How much of it is, uh, is, is how much of her damage is coming from attack percent? Because crit multiplies tenacity buff, but attack percent doesn't. There's a lot of factors that go into it. Uh, you can't front load your damage as well either. Uh, at the end of the day, I like using tenacity a bit more, but Clam is good. Like, if you have a good Clam set for some of your Kokomi teams, you don't have to, you don't necessarily have to farm a tenacity set for the other ones. It's, it's okay. And then Gilded Flop is always, is obviously always going to be the better set when you're playing her in Bloom teams and always a bad set when you're not. Uh, healing bonus is basically always better than HP circlet because it gets you more healing and it gets you more damage. And how viable is an ER Sands over an HP one? Well, you need to meet your ER requirements. So if your HP Sands isn't giving you enough ER to ult every rotation, ER Sands is significantly better than HP Sands. But if you're not having problems with getting your burst back, then ER Sands would be completely useless. Uh, is it ever worth putting her on a Hydro Damage Bonus Goblet for most cases, or only for a carry build? I mean, it kind of depends, right? If you're using her off-field with Clam, then Hydro Damage Goblet, like, you're not doing enough actual Hydro Damage for the Hydro Damage Goblet to out-damage the additional clam damage that you'd get from an HP goblet. But if you're playing her on tenacity, then you would obviously get more damage from the hydro goblet. So it's an, another 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 case of it depends. How much ER does Kogami generally want in her teams, both in an on and off field capacity? And is it always advisable to maintain 100% uptime on her jellyfish? Uh, I'll start with the second question because it's very simple. Yes, yes. More, more jellyfish uptime is more good. 
and how much er does she generally want well again right it heavily depends on what exactly the teams you're using look like and how much energy you're generating from your other units but let's take a look at an ayaka team for for, for example so in an Ayaka team, you're going to have Ayaka, you're going to have, let's say, Rosaria, Ka uh, Kazuha, and Kogami, right? Let's say let's say this is the baseline team you're using. You have Rosaria on 5, you're doing 2 E's per rotation on her, you're doing 2 E's per rotation on Ayaka, you're doing 2 E's per rotation on Kazuha, with one of them being a 5 proc, and you get Kogami. This is a team that generates a fairly large amount of energy because you have 5 on more than one unit. You're not actually on fielding Kogami at all, right? So basically all of her particles are going to be caught off field. So in a 20 second rotation, you're going to have 10 hits and an average of 6.6 ish particles. Let's say that one of the particles happens right as you swap to her to burst. Let's be, let's be generous with that. And let's round it up to seven instead of 6.6. Then from a different element, you're getting two Rosaria E's, which are three particles. And you have two Ayaka E's, which are four to five, so 4.5. So that's a total of nine plus six, so 15 particles. None of them are caught by Kokomi. Then you also have Kazuha, two E's, also none of them caught by Kokomi. There are some rotations where you could catch some of Kazuha's particles with Kokomi but I don't think we're going to be looking at that for now. Just want to get a decent baseline for it. And then clear particles, she's not on field when the damage happens and when the five procs happen. And then you have two five procs, which is six. And then about two particles from HP particles. Now you're generating three, 1.8, 1, 0.6, 2, 1.2 for a total of energy generated of 36. Now her burst costs... 70 ER requirements is going to be around 194%. Now, if you're doing the rotation where you start with Rosaria, EQ, Kazuha, QE maybe instead of EQ, so that you catch Kazuha's particles on Kokomi, then that's three clear particles from the five and three of the non-elemental particles brings the ER cost down to like 175. If you're using uh, high refined fav so that both your Rosaria and your Kazuha can proc fav every time they swap in, and you get two more fav procs, this goes to 14, your requirements go to 160. But the point is, when you're not on fielding her much, her ER requirements, at least if she's solo hydro, tend to be fairly high. They'll generally vary anywhere between 150, 160-ish, to like 220 if you're not on fielding her. If you are on fielding her, obviously we wouldn't be able to use the exact same team, but let's just simplify the f out of this and let's just reverse the particles that are caught and non-caught from her own stuff. And it's closer to like 140 to 160, between 140 and 170 instead of between 160 and 220. But the point is basically she has ER requirements and, and they're actually fairly high. The thing though is because, right, another consequence of her not wanting crit is that you have less substats that are good for her, which means that you can focus a lot more on trying to go for artifacts that have both HP percent and ER. Because you're not looking for crit, you're looking for HP percent and ER. Those are the main two stats you're, you're looking for on Kokomi. When I use her in freeze teams on this account, I basically always use this ER sense because without it, I just don't have the ER requirements because I don't have refines on my fab weapons on this account. And it's just, I just, I just don't happen to have any artifacts that give me enough energy recharge in the substats. And especially in teams where she's off field, if she doesn't have the best build, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't really matter if you heal a little bit less or you do a little bit less damage with, with, with your normal attacks, but it will make a huge difference if you lose uptime on your on your jellyfish because you didn't have enough er and so unironically i think that er tends to be the most important part of kokomi and the most important subsets for kokomi when you're using her off field it's your main focus i've played kokomi with a crit circlet just because it was the only way for me to meet my er requirements because i have a lot of er on this circlet now obviously when you're playing her on field and then on top of that you're using prototype amber the you're also generating energy from prototype amber and the amount of energy you're generating is going to depend on your refine but assuming that you have r5 you're generating i think it's six yeah six so it's 18 energy so this goes down to 52 right and the amount of er becomes a lot lower right your er requirements go down quite a bit which is part of why when you're playing on field kokomi prototype amber tends to be a fairly popular option and which is also a reason a potential reason why you might want to use prototype amber even on off field kokomi just because you need the energy <laughs> <laughs> Weapon overview, how do all her catalyst options stack up against each other in her conventional build teams, as well as in an on-field DPS role? On-field DPS role, her best option is her signature, but not by that much. Prototype Amber is also a good option. The thing is, it's going to depend a lot on your subsets and what 
team you're playing but because she only really has two substats that she really wants to get then weapons that give her energy recharge can be really good but if you have really high artifact quality good hp percent artifacts will also have er on their substats and because you can't roll hp percent on two different lines you can roll hp percent and er on two different lines so again depending on artifact quality you might have more or less energy recharge from your substats alone so that can make the weapons that give her energy a little bit less valuable it can make weapons like thrilling tails come back on top uh Hawushin ring is also another pretty reasonable option because it has energy and it can buff your uh electro units in teams where you use electro units but yeah as a general rule i'd say that it's almost always between prototype amber and tdds with Hawushin being a fairly reasonable alternative in specific teams and then in nilo bloom teams obviously sack frag is the best option you can make an argument for sack frag with uh other teams as well just because because it lets you reposition your skill but it, it, you are losing a lot if you are going for that so it's not something i would necessarily recommend if you're playing any low bloom team and you do not have sack frag because it is a gotcha weapon i'd say just vote just use any weapon that will help with her energy requirements right so you can use hakushin or you can use prototype prototype amber you can use pulse horn eye i guess but I don't like it as much because it only increases your ER for half of your rotation. Unfortunately, without crit, you can't proc the Fav effect, which means that Fav is actually not a good option for her, which makes me very sad. Yeah, you can use Fruit of Fulfillment, but ugh. it's such a bad weapon. It feels like a terrible way to use your your billets. I generally wouldn't recommend it. The thing about Sackfrag is it's not just the subset, the effect is also really, really useful because it makes you less reliant on having your burst, which makes your ER requirements lower, right? Because you can refresh your skill. Without Sackfrag, your ER requirements start going back up again, even in those Nilo Blue teams, Nilo, uh, Nilo Bloom teams, because Nilo's energy generation is not very high. And so weapons like Prototype Amber that gives you energy are still fairly valuable. At the end of the day, right, like there's an argument to be made for a lot of the different weapons. Personally, I'd lean more towards Prototype Ember, but it's not the end of the world. All right, Constellation Overview. Are any of her Constellations worthwhile, worthwhile at all for most players? No. no. <laughs> uh, but not everyone is most players. Actually, most players are not most players. I know, that's crazy. Uh, so if you are considering getting it, let's go over what they do. C1. While donning the ceremonial garment created by Nereid's Ascension, the final normal attack in Sangonomi Akakumi's combo will unleash a swimming fish to deal 30% of her max HP as hydro damage. This damage is not considered normal attack damage. So at a baseline, your combo has an HP scaling of 8.2% plus 15% of your healing bonus, which is generally clam circlet essential or her and, and like healing passive so about 60 percent of her hp uh, as damage adds 30 percent so it's about a 50 percent damage increase it's a bit less than that because she also has the attack scaling which is a little bit of her damage as well so it's closer to like 40 ish percent damage increase from her normal attacks obviously if you're using her with clam it becomes even less than 40 percent but th this generally tends to be somewhere between a 30 and 40 percent damage increase to her when you're playing her on field the big thing about it is not the damage that it does though the big thing about it like the damage that it does is relevant if you end up playing her on field but the main thing about this is that it has a separate icd from her normal attacks which significantly increases her hydro application which makes her a lot more versatile in the kinds of teams where you can play her so if you really really like kokomi i'd say that her c1 is actually a thing that you could consider going for uh, i would not recommend going for her signature but her c1 helps her a lot in becoming more versatile and actually having use cases over the other hydro units on top of just ha her having healing so it's actually a fairly decent constellation how impactful is this in nilo teams not that impactful because you shouldn't be spending that much time normal attacking on kokomi and nilo teams nilo teams tend to be a lot more quick swappy so you're not going to get that many procs of this in your rotations uh c2 is a joke the main thing that c2 does is it makes your clam do a little bit more damage but only when she's off field because you're already maxing out with a decently built kokomi you're already maxing out your clam procs when she's normal attacking with her burst up so it doesn't actually do anything but then on top of that it's only to characters that have less than 50 percent hp which like if you have a lot of healing won't be that often it's shit just just don't just no 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 okay uh c3 it's fine it's not terrible but it's not particularly good it does help her it, like it increases her motion value as well but it's not that big of an increase it goes from 8.2 to 9.7 which is about like a 20 percent it, it's 
the average, like, constellation for talent damage. Her burst is most of her talent damage, but she's not that big of a portion of your team's damage. This doesn't apply to her C1's damage, and it also doesn't apply to clam damage. So realistically, it's not all that great, but it is, like, an, an, a nice little constellation. Uh, C4 helps with her energy requirements, and when she's on field, the attack speed is fine, I guess. It's not particularly impactful. C5 is her worst constellation. It just doesn't really do anything. C6 is okay. But again, right, this this is not actually as good as, like, her C1. Like, if her C6 and her C1 swapped places, her C1 would be worse. But yeah, so she gets a few incremental increases if you get more constellations, but I would say there's no real point other than you just really like her and you want to give your queen some money. There's no real reason to ever go past C1. Team overview. Which of her teams would I say is the best overall? What are the team archetypes where she's reasonably worth using over the alternatives? And has there been any new fun off meta comp since the last as with Kokomi? I mean, I think I've already covered teams for the most part. I'd say that the team where it feels like she's the most well suited to being in that slot are Freeze and Bloom. Uh, from what I've seen, it seems to be the main teams where people end up playing her. I do think that she's fairly underrated in soup teams with uh, Sterling, Fischl, Sucrose. Look at the good old Sucrose come on. Uh, but it is a harder team to play, so like I, I understand why it's not that popular. In terms of off meta comps, I don't really see that many, honestly. It's whatever. Is Fridge good now? No. Fridge, unfortunately, has never been good. Uh, there's like you can use the fridge interaction in teams that are good right in, in hyper fridge which is a hyper bloom with fridge and oven which is version with fridge and those teams actually are sometimes good but actual like a fridge team is unfortunately not very good how big of a drawback is Gogomi's total inability to use fab it makes her the worst unit in the game and you should feel bad if you ever think otherwise i want you right now to go to the church of favonius in game and pray Pray to your god, the Favonius weapons. Repent for your sins. The only reason why Kogami was allowed to exist in the game is because technically you can build enough crit rate to make her use fab. It's just very difficult. Forgive me, Favonius sword, for I have sinned. <laughs> Forgive me, <laughs> Favder. <laughs> Forgive me, Favonius, for I have sinned. Oh, brother, this guy st- Do I think she'll float or sink in Fontaine's waters? She'll sink because she's a loser because she can't use fav. True. And then English or Japanese Gumi voice lines take two. Eh, not today. 